Hey everyone and welcome back to X Canyon. If you're looking to start a side gig where you edit reels and TikToks or maybe you want to upskill your own skills in editing your own reels and TikToks, then today I'm going to show you two powerful easy tools to really up your game and keep it easy for you to do. And that is Canva and CapCut. So let's just dive into it and we'll start from the beginning. So first up is Canva. It's a fantastic tool for quick and creative edits, especially if you love adding graphics, text, or effects to your videos. There are a couple of versions of Canva. One of course is the free version, and then there is the pro version. I personally would go with the pro version because it also gives you full access to the royalty free music and videos. So today we will be working with the pro account. So let's start by designing our new video where we click choose video and then select the Instagram Reels or TikTok template, whichever one you need. Uh, rename the file because otherwise you will lose things. <laughs> so next step is uploading our footage from the computer itself. And then once it's in, you can drag and drop it onto the timeline and then we can start to trim crop and rearrange the the clips canva is very intuitive you can just click and drag about and that is super super handy there are a couple of shortcuts that are good to know and that num one of them is s s is a uh, slice or split i think i work across a couple of different platforms so it's s <laughs> canva does make it really easy to add text transitions and even animated stickers the transitions it sits between each of the pages. So you just kind of need to hover your mouse in between the pages and you get the options for the transitions there. When you want to add text, just remember to use bold, clear text that grabs the attention and it's easy to read. You can also adjust the timing of when your text and elements appear to match the flow of your video, which I think is super handy. To keep your audience engaged, try adding a few transitions between the clips. Just select the transition icon and choose from Canva's options. When it comes to music, you can use TikTok or Instagram's own music, but you can also find an array of amazing music on the Canva app, uh, which is royalty free. There may be some limitations if you have a free account or a pro account, so just bear that in mind. Now, the one piece of advice I would give for music is that if you do use TikTok and Instagram's own music for your content, you do run the risk of potentially having it muted if that specific song's uh, permissions change or anything like that. So bear that in mind if you are adding one of your own voiceovers. I've had it happen in the past where a whole song gets muted, including my audio, and all the work just goes to waste. So what I tend to do is for trending audios, I will use Instagram's algorithm and TikTok's algorithm songs, but I will never add my own voice to it. And that means that when I upload content with my voice on it, it's songs that are royalty free or they're part of the art list uh, playlist that I pay for. So I know that they're protected at all times as well. All right, so let's start editing the color within all these clips. So you click the actual video itself, head over to edit and then click the adjust. Here we have all the things that we would like to adjust, especially for beginners. It really does cover everything. Brightness, contrast, vibrance, saturation and even a couple of textures as well, which I think is more than enough for anybody who wants to get into editing from the beginning. So for this feature, I think it's great. It's easy to find and easy to navigate as well. Next thing we want to do is get captions. So upload your audio file into Canva and then you can drag and drop it onto the timeline. Make sure you have a quick listen and ensure that it is actually there and you can hear it. So the next step would be scrolling down to the app section. This is a bit of a, like a hack. Um, so scroll down to the app section and search for an app that's called Subtitles. There will be a couple of variations here, but I do tend to go for the one that is animated, which I think just works a little bit better. So click that and then it will come up in your app section and you just simply select the type of style that you want for your captions and then you just follow the process through here. You can, of course, change the color and you can select all the pages that you want to have it actually inputted. I would select all the pages and then click export. 
The one thing to note here is that once you do export it, what it will do is compress all of the files that are in there and all the footage and transitions. So once you have finished, fully finished your video, would I then add captions? just because you can't go back and edit it once it's done. This isn't as fluid as CapCut, I have to say, but it is a workaround and it does work. When you're ready to export it, click the compressed file, which is normally the last page, and that is the only thing that you are downloading. And that is basically it for Canva. Right, so up next is CapCut. CapCut's great because you can also edit it on your phone. I have tried to use Canva on my phone before and it does not like it. So yeah, CapCut is great for using it on your mobile and also your desktop. I prefer working on my desktop because it's just so, so easy. But one thing I did wanted to say was the reason these apps are so great is because they store your footage on the cloud, which makes it really easy to access. And you don't need to have a hard drive to hand every time you want to think about maybe editing it slightly or repurposing it for different content so it does just make it that much easier if it were long form content for example like this video i will always do it the old-fashioned way which is with the hard drives because you just it's a lot more footage and you just want to be more you know it just want you just want it to be more secure in a hard drive so that's one of the reasons why these two apps are so great is because they're easy to access you can access them from anywhere because they are cloud-based which is a massive plus anyway let's dive into the interface and have a look at editing the same kind of footage that we did before but using CapCut. so this is the free account the create project here and like we would normally do, we have to input the footage. So let's click there and let's get in all this beautiful footage that we have. Click import and it is done. It's a really nice interface, I think. It's very clean and I really love the fact that the timeline is nice and clean. It's simply a drag and drop system, which I think is really nice and easy to use. Let's just use these three clips for now. I think it's pretty cool. It's enough for us. So let's dive into it. So let's just start by sl slicing. Uh, I believe this one is a B because it's a blade here, which I really like. So let's just blade it to there, move that here. So it's easy to move the little trim it and we can scrub through again. I love the scrub through, through free feature here. I think it's really easy. One of the other things I really like is that it does have a music library as well. So if we go up to the top and we go to audio, and we go to music here, you will be able to see if there's a little pro feature just up here, which means we can't use it because it is in fact a pro feature. I think a little bit bright and country is good for me. So again, it's so easy to just select the music and then drag and drop it onto the timeline. It's easy to see the beats here. So why don't we just trim this to match the beats? I think that's quite nice. Um, it's not gonna be a mysterious Halloween one, so that's fine. So again, I love the fact that we can drag and drop here and let's just trim it to there. We'll grab the B, the blade tool once again here and we will select the A tool and then delete it. So this is in here. So now what I want to do is fade in and fade out the music. So at the top right here, we can see that we've got the option to fade in and fade out, which I think is really cool. And if you look at the audio bar now, you can see that it's got like a little gray, a little gray zone, I guess. That actually indicates to you how much of a fade in it has or how little it has. So let's add a little fade in there. Not so much of a fade out because I think that's quite cool. Now, the fact that these orange spikes are here, I think is really handy because it tells you when it kind of reaches a little bit beyond the limit. So let's just bring it down to there. Now, amazing. So I just want to bring down the audios. I love all this ability to just kind of toggle down audios really easily. I found that quite challenging with Canva. So these are the ones that we want. And then let's talk about adding in a transition. So let's head up over to the transitions. Again, they've got so many amazing ones, but they do have core, really good core free ones, which I think is important as well. So again, a click and drag over these sections here and let's see what that looks like. 
I like that. And then if we were to click on here, up at the top right corner, you can see that there's a duration as well. So this interface is really easy to use and it is quite good fun as well. So it's got a lot of, lot of easy features that for beginners is just paramount. So that's great. Right, now let's add in a little bit of text. So first and foremost, let's pull in the audio, which we're gonna import. So, cause I did a voiceover a little bit earlier. So let's go back to import. We'll go to downloads. I'm hoping it's here. Yes, there we go, import that. And again, it comes up in the timeline. Let's go here. And then we're gonna trim it again. And for the sake of quickness, I am just gonna add it in here. Now, this is where I would like my auto captions to be generated and this is where to be honest with you CapCut really does stand out the auto generations are absolutely easy peasy lemon squeezy so we've got the audio voiceover that we want to have captions on we'll swing up here up to the top select captions and we literally auto captions and you click generate it will take a few seconds just to auto generate them which i think is really pretty amazing and then we'll have a, have a good movement of our text so for example all right amazing so now if we want to edit that we click the first one and here you can see where you can edit any of the spelling you can change the font which i think is super cool as well i'm just going to leave it actually let's move it to pacific i think that's quite cool we can change the font size i th i just think there's a lot of things you can do here you can have a preset style which i think that's pretty nice as well and you know scale up scale down you can change the position the blend the opacity i just think there's a lot of options here to animate it you just click on the top section here go to animation and if you scroll down really scroll down um you end up having a lot of stuff that is still free which i think is really 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 cool so anyway let's head back over to text we'll go to templates and this is where we have those fantastic speech text to speech um animations templates whatever you want to call them and there's some great free ones if you scroll all the way down to the bottom for example this one let's just go with this one for now click it and then we'll go back to the text here and it will automatically add it in which i think is fantastic so there we go i think it's fair. i think it's a really good interface within seconds within what is this six minutes i've already added music i've added in audio i've added in captions and one transition as well which i think is just so much fun in addition to this we can also change the color of these individual clips so if you head back up to uh, your clip and we go to the import we go filters sorry we go to filters, we can add all these crazy fil filters as well, which I just think it's so, so good as well. Okay, so if we go up to the adjustments here, we can't do a lot of the color match, color correction, but we can edit the basics of our footage, which I think most beginners really just need. So we can amend the contrast, for example, we can add the brilliance, maybe not so much, let's turn it down a little bit. We can sharpen it, give it a vignette. You know, there's so much we can do here. We can make it a little bit warmer if we wanted to. We could really change that color. I don't know why you would, but there we go. Or you can undersaturate it or really oversaturate it. So the core principles of color, kind of color correction here are where we need them to be and they are free. So I think that's just fantastic. So then once you are happy with whatever it is that you've created, which I'm sure will be amazing, we literally just then have to go to export, check that we've got everything in line, make sure that we change this name because it's such a bad habit to, you know, not change it, can't spell Halloween. And then you make sure that it's 1080p. Remember that Instagram, TikTok, they really just downgrade things to 1080p. Unless you are gonna be uploading to YouTube, then I would recommend doing it in, two, in 4K, sorry. But everything else can kind of stay as it is. And you just click export, which is really that easy. So there we go, this is CapCut. As you can see, there are both pros and cons to both of these platforms. So it's important for you to go and try them yourself and see which one matches your workflow. If you did find this video helpful, then please give it a thumbs up and follow along for more creator tips. Now go and create something amazing.